know, whoever knows me, put your hand up. If you know me, put your hand up. If not, say hi. Um, my name is Ro. For those of you who don't know me, I am, hello, hello, hello. I am a narcissistic abuse survivor and I'm a certified life coach. And I'm here to help you heal from narcissistic abuse. Um, I've been in two romantic relationships that were with abusers. Hi, Megan. And I am healing my own trauma. I'm helping other people heal as well. So welcome. We're going to talk a little bit about going no contact today. And I'm going to answer any questions that you have. I stay on for one hour. So if you're just popping in, feel free to drop a question in the chat if you are curious about how to stay no contact, how to create a place where you feel safe to be you. Hi, Penelope, how's it going? And, um, and I will do my best to answer those questions for you. So first of all, what is no contact? What is no contact? And if you're just coming in, we're just kind of getting people trickling in here. No contact is the first act of self-love. It is your very first act of self-love. And it'll be the one way that a narcissist will not get what they want, which is supply. A narcissist only wants your supply. Hello, thank you for the follow. So a narcissist wants you to be fixated on them. The narcissist wants you to be looking at them, checking on them. The narcissist wants access to you. The narcissist wants to talk to you, wants to bother you. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what's the sad faces? What's up with the sad faces, Sean? It's hard to go no contact. Yeah, it is absolutely hard to go no contact. Um, thank you for the roses. <laughs> what are those sad faces though? Uh, so who here wants to go no contact with a narcissist? Who here is dying to just say, no, goodbye. Goodbye to that narcissist. Who wants to put them out of their mind, out of sight, out of their life? Those were faces of ad admiration. I got a TikTok package today, guys. <laughs> so funny. It's like I never, I never got anything from TikTok before and they sent me like, I should show it to you. I'm going to go live on my other account and I'll show it to you. But it's like um, a pillow and like a hat and um, lights and stuff like that. It's kind of funny. Yes and no. So yes and no. Okay, so for those of you who want to go no contact with a narcissist, and yes, the answer is yes. How many of you who said yes have a little bit of no? Have a little bit of like, I don't know. And where do you think that comes from, right? People who want to go no contact with a narcissist, there's going to be this, this attachment, this kind of level of emotional connection that you still have for that narcissist. You still want to know what they're doing. You still want to um, check on them. You don't want to make, you want to make sure that they're not happy. You want to make sure that they're not thriving, right? And you also, if you think that the narcissist isn't going to be, um, you know, in your life anymore and that they, maybe they'll find somebody new or a new supply, you don't want them to, to be happy with that new person. So going no contact is not only blocking them. Hey, mermaid, what's up? Going no contact is not only blocking them, right? Stopping contact with them and not speaking to them. Going no contact is not seeing them, not seeing what they're doing. Yes, we want to make sure they're okay. Sure. What's the real reason? We want to make sure everyone in life is okay. But why the narcissist? What part of that makes you want them to be okay, to be healthy, to be safe? Why? What do you get from that? Right? You're wasting time and energy not being vindictive and hoping they are miserable. Wasting time and energy is not being vindictive and hoping that they're okay. I, you're wasting time and energy is not being vindictive, hoping they are miserable. Um, okay. Can you refer, can you repeat that sentence? My bad typo, okay. So yeah, like if we rage on the narcissist because there's all sorts of levels of emotion that we're gonna have. We're gonna have these levels of emotion. We're gonna have anger, we're gonna have rage. Sometimes it's gonna be like underneath the surface, you'll have sadness, you'll have remorse, you'll have regret, right? And then you're gonna have wanna have revenge. You're gonna wanna be vindictive. There's a lot of things that happen and like these like feelings that happen when you're 
um, trying to heal from somebody who abused you and who lied to you, manipulated you, cheated on you, stolen from you, used you. And you want to, you know, people want justice. I totally get that. But when all those feelings dissipate, and they will, we can get to a place where we're no longer affected, no longer bothered by this person, right? We can get to this place of indifference. And this beautiful place of indifference means that that narcissist is no longer a person in your life that you care about, that you wish well or wish ill. They're no longer a person that you are curious about. They're, they're dead to you. Basically, they're dead to you, right? They're the, you know, gas station attendant across the, they're, they're the person that lives across the street. He signed up for therapy, but I don't know if they can change. No, you don't know if they can change. And really, we will never know if someone can change. Hey, babe, what's up, Jess? How's it going? Thank you for your chat. Thank you for your chat early this morning. Um, as if they're, it never existed. Exactly. If they're truly dead to you, then you wouldn't be vindictive. Well, if they're truly dead to you, then that means that you are in a place of indifference. That means that the vindictive, the revenge, that sort of behavior is this this place that's been dissipated. It's gone now. So yes. Oh, bro, this person tore me down again today and I left her. Didn't even argue anymore. Just left. Good for you, girl. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jess. <laughs> I'm much better now that I took a course of mourning the relationship. Yes, we have to mourn the relationship. We have to grieve. Grieving is a process that has steps. Grieving is a process that takes time. I love you too. And it takes time to heal from these people, right? We have to grieve. And yes, being vindictive, being vengeful, there's a, an element there that is a grieving element. We still have to grieve. Funny story, I became friends with a new supply. He eventually got discarded. Oh, that is a funny story. Um... Yeah, it seems it seems juvenile. When you when you look back at the narcissist and you look back at all of the hurt and the pain and everything they put you through, it is something that you can look at eventually when you're ready and when you've when you've gotten to a good place in your healing that you can say, "Wow, that was funny." Right? That was pretty funny. And then when they have zero power over you, right? The grieving was very hard. Now it's just peace. The grieving is supposed to be really hard, guys. And that's okay. It's okay to say, yeah, that, that was hard and that hurts. That part is okay. I also feel like I should defend myself when he excuses, accuses, but today I didn't respond. Yes, well, you know what? They want you to defend yourself, so they will say some crazy story. They'll make up stories all the time, and they'll say things about you that, you know, you'll you'll hear it, and you, you might be like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense, or this doesn't add up, and there will be little holes to their stories or little holes to their accusations. Yesterday, they were accusing you of cheating on a Thursday because they saw you at the Starbucks on a Thursday, right? And then the next day they'll be like, yeah. And then that Wednesday when I had that appointment when you were at the Starbucks, they want you to be like, wait a minute, you said Thursday. They want you to engage in the narcissistic word salad. They want you to be confused with what they're saying. They'll attack you with words and they'll serve you up some salad, some bowl of words that none of it makes any sense so that you have to pick it apart and go, what's in here? What's in this salad? There's some lettuce, there's some dressing, there's some of this. What is all of this? Is this the lie? Is this manipulation? Is this part of the truth? Is this, is this actually a confession? They want you to sift through the salad and try to figure out what that means. What we need to do is we have to just, ex we just have to ignore it. We almost have to give it zero attention. Like this person that you're talking to, you're looking right at them and they're a grown person. They're a grown adult. You have to look at them like a child a toddler, just blah, 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 making up all these lies. That's what a toddler does, right? A pile of BS, it's just a big pile of shit. Whatever comes out of their mouth is a lie. And they're doing it because they're bored. They're doing it because they want to manipulate you. Hey, Sandy, what's up? They're emotionally stunted, yes. Narcissists are one of, they are the most immature, like, just emotionally stunted people on the planet, okay? The reason why is because they lack emotional intelligence 
as a child, they were never able to access the skills of being able to regulate their emotions, feel their feelings. As a child, you're supposed to be given tools to label your emotions, feel your feelings, and regulate your feelings. Those are the three things that we need to do as children to be able to get to a place where we're emotionally mature, that we can honor other people's emotions, as well as identify our own and honor our own emotions. But instead, what a narcissist does is they project their emotions onto you because they don't know how to feel them. They don't know how to regulate them. And yes, they do care about their reputation. They care about their image. Exactly, Rhea. It's, it's, yeah, it's bad to expose them on social media. You know, so many times I've wanted... Exposure campaigns are tempting, okay? Exposure campaigns are very tempting, but any type of campaign... You know, what else is a campaign, guys? A smear campaign. Smearing somebody's name was what something a narcissist does. They go around and say all this crap about their ex over and over and over again. Crazy stories, right? And they just like, you know, try to tell everyone, try to tell the world all of these lies. That's a smear campaign. Okay, an exposure campaign is something that we want to, we really want justice. We really want to tell, tell the world what, what this person is doing. But instead, we heal. And the biggest difference between campaigning and healing out loud, Shauna, is healing out loud is sharing your experience. Pay attention to what people say when they're sharing their stories, especially on social media. My friend Carrie McAvoy, PhD, she just made an amazing TikTok just recently, just a, f a few days ago, about the difference between someone telling a sob story and telling a real story, okay? Someone who is telling a sob story is doing it for manipulation. They're trying to get you to have this emotional pull. They're almost manipulating you to see if you'll feel something, right? Somebody who is sharing a sob story is going to have every little detail in the book, they're going to say what day it was, if it was sunny. They're going to say, you know, that there was a specific look in this person's eyes or they came over on a whatever and there was a birthday party and there was a this and there, that. They're going to have every single detail in this sob story, okay? The second thing that she said was in the sob story, they're going to have no emotion. They're going to say it matter of fact. They're going to focus on the details and say, yes, this was what happened, they would wake me up in the middle of the night and do this. Sleep deprivation, boom. And they would just tell a story just with words, no emotion. Okay? Right? And then they'll, they'll, they'll look around. Sometimes when people are sharing their stories and they're trying to heal out loud, they'll look around. They'll look and they'll... It's like they're looking for the truth. It's like they're trying to create the truth. Someone who's telling a real genuine story, yeah, it's like they're possessed. Exactly. They're trying to access truth wherever they can find it in their mind, wherever they can see it. So when you see these people on TikTok trying to share their stories, look for that, watch for that. See if they're actually looking like, you know, in the camera and they're looking at you and they're, they're actually accessing a part of them that needs healing. If they're too detailed, if they're, if they're void of emotion and they're saying all the facts and they're looking around for the truth, they're literally creating it on the spot. They're creating it on the spot. Someone who is telling a real story will tell you how it felt. If this person ripped their hair out, they'll say, I screamed really loudly. It hurt so much the back of my neck, the way they ripped my hair out of my head and the pain that I was in. I was so concerned and I was so scared that this person actually did this. And the look in their eyes terrified me. Like I didn't recognize who they were. Like they'll say a story in that manner. That's a real story. And it's not to draw you in for any sort of personal, like you're not going to feel, um, they're not trying to get you to feel any way. They're just sharing it because they've never shared it before. You'll notice very quickly when somebody is healing out loud versus doing a smear campaign or trying to tell a sob story is that, is there some sort of pull at the end? Do they want you? Do they want you to feel something? right? Or are they sharing it because they needed to release it? And how many times, 
Are you hearing the same old story over and over and over again, told so many different ways with little extra details? Watch for that. Mine always had to be the loudest in the room when he was at work. Yeah, it's the loud ones, the audacious ones, the ones that are very overt, right? That need to be this sort of center of attention. How do other people fall for it with them? A lot of people do. I did. I fell for one of those. And people believe it because they need that sense of healing, right? They need to believe it. Narcs are very, very tricky because they are great actors. And a lot of narcissists will actually pick up some traits and some behaviors from other people as they go along their journey, right? So as they're going along and being this sort of narcissist and abusing people, hi, nice to see you. I know I'm never live. Um, they're going around and they're picking up traits. The scariest narcissists are the ones that are hiding on social media pretending to be victims because they're learning. They know that there's this thing on social media called the narcissist community, the narcissist abuse community. They know, right? So they're going to go out and they're going to learn everything they need to learn. They're going to follow all the self-aware narcissists. They're going to follow all the life coaches. They're going to follow all the psychologists and they're going to watch all the content, right? And they're going to learn what does it look like to be a victim? How does it, how do the victims act? How do, what do they say? And they're going to start masking themselves and start mimicking, mirroring a victim, just like they would mirror you when they're love bombing you. So be very careful about that. Yes, that's what he did to me. He found me on a live about narcissists. Yeah, same, 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 same. Is it true that they're worried that you're the narc and you just aren't flat out? Is it true that if you're worried that you're the narc, you just aren't? No, that's not exactly true. Like I am friends with two self-aware narcissists and like that is information that isn't just, it's very, you know, it's something that you have to like take with a grain of salt. If you have the ability to self-reflect, there's, there's a good chance that you are either not a narcissist or you have the ability to change and cope with your narcissism. A lot of narcissists won't look at themselves and go, oh, I'm, I'm you know, a narcissist. You know, like maybe I'm a narcissist, maybe I'm hurting some people and I'm going to look back in the past and see if I hurt people. A lot of people are not like that. Can a narcissist change? Yes, absolutely. A narcissist can change. Do they want to change? That's the real question. Does the narcissist want to change? That is the real question. If a narcissist wants to change, that means that they've hit rock bottom. That means that they can be honest. That means that they, there's something that, that's going on in their life that's really painful and they need to change it, Right. You have to be in this place of pain in order to change, right? You have to, you have, everything has to be going wrong in your life in order for you to say, hey, things need to go right here. But for narcissists, everything is going right for them. For the most part, right? They're getting their supply. They're using people. They're getting what they want. They're manipulating people to get what they want, right? They're exploiting people, right? They're entitled, so they'll cheat on you and they won't care. They'll abuse you. They'll say this. They'll say that. They're not who they are. And they need that to survive. They need to keep lying to survive. So why would they want to change? What they're doing is working for them, right? So we have to ask ourselves, if a narcissist wants to change, we have to ask ourselves, do they really want to? We want them to. Of course, we want them to change. But do they want to change? That's the only way they will is if they want to. Um, still vulnerable and trapped in these kinds of people. We all are. Erica, so turned out to be not a real friend. I'm hurting from still my relationship and then I'm still vulnerable to attracting these kind of people. So, you know, there's a thing here. Thank you for the finger love. Appreciate you. Um, and Paula, just so you know, I'm going to go live on my other account later and I got this TikTok package that I'm going to show on live. It's like, like a light and like a, like a hat and like a bag and stuff like that. So yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. Um, but yeah, so there's this, there's this, this, um, this, this thought that we have that like, once we are healed from narcissists, we get away from a narcissist. I will send you an invite that if we are healed from a narcissist, then we shouldn't be able to like go and find another one. Right. But we do, we end up finding narcissists all the time. They find us. So don't ever be in this place where you feel like you're attracting all these narcissists, right? Um, 
I've always said he was a narc. He checks off plenty of the covert boxes. Does that sound like something a narc would do? Sound What sounds like something a narc would do? Checking off all the narc boxes. So what do you mean by that? Who's hacking phones? What? <laughs> what comment is that? Um, my ex absolutely did not want to change. No remorse. Yeah, they need to have some sort of remorse or else they won't change. What's the warning sign? So that you have to look for red flags. Now, I was in therapy just this week, and one of the biggest things I was struggling with was how come I didn't see the red flags? What, what did I miss? How did I go along for so long with somebody and not realize it, right? So there's a, there's a couple levels there that I had to really heal through, right? There was this, um, this like space between, between me and somebody who I, who I thought I trusted. And, you know, that distance really gave it, gave it some, some space. So I couldn't really see or feel red flags, but we have to get to this place where we get, forgive ourselves for not seeing the red flag. Love bomb covers red flag. That's basically it guys. Love bomb covers red flag. We can't see all the red flags with all those love bombs in the way, right? So when you do realize the person you're dealing with is a liar, when you do realize the person you're dealing with is manipulating you, when you do realize, holy shit, I've been used this whole time, and you say no, and you put a boundary up, or you say goodbye, or you block them, and you do go no contact, once you do get to this place where you realize it, give yourself some grace that your picker, your, your, maybe your picker's broken, but your radar works. It's what my therapist said to me, your radar still works, Ro. You were able to pick it. Rock, paper, scissors, love bomb, red flag. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. My counselor said that I may have seen the red flags, but it felt familiar. It felt like home. Hey, John, what's up, my friend? This is exactly my covert husband does. Blames me for literally everything. Yeah, they'll blame you for everything. If they're not blaming you. So like, say you're the new supply, right? If they're not blaming you, they'll blame their old supply. They're blaming someone. They're blaming everyone but themselves. They can never actually access any accountability, any responsibility for themselves, right? But how do you stop it? It hurts. I know. You gave up on men completely. <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. Um, we have to accept instead of resist. That's how we stop this quote unquote, it's never going to really stop. Okay, guys, like there is this level of healing that will never go away. Can we accept that? Is that something that we can say, hey, guys, let's learn to accept that. We don't have to be healed to love again, right? We don't have to be fully healed to step out into the world and trust people again. There's no such thing as fully healed. There's this really crazy notion that perpetuates on TikTok and social media about this, this healed and this unhealed version of ourselves. And it's like almost like the healed version and the unhealed version are, are on this priority scale. Like, you know, you're superior if you're healed. You're inferior if you're unhealed. You're not, uh, you're not healed yet. You got to be up here where the superior people live in the healed place. There's no such fucking thing. We're not fully healed. That's like saying that we're fully grown. We never fully grow, right? We're always growing. We don't fully learn everything. Anyone who says they know everything about everything and they've learned everything they can, they don't need to read any books. They, no, 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 no. They, there's always more learning to do. There's always more growing to do. There's always more healing to do. We're always healing, always growing, always learning. Exactly, Shauna. Exactly. You're so welcome. I want you to remember that there is no such thing as fully healed. This is a myth. To me, this is a myth. Unpopular belief. If anybody ever says to you, oh, you know, you should be healed first before you do that, you're not healed yet. Why are you doing that? You're not healed. Not true. Not true. Hi, Reason. How's it going? So true. So true. So that is, that is just, you know, if, whenever you see something on social media or you see something on TikTok or you see something wherever on YouTube, make sure that you feel good about it. 
The second you feel like kind of like mm, something's not right here, listen to your intuition. Hope you're on later wishing you peace and calm. Yes, I should be on later on my other account. I'm going to probably show some of my um, TikTok gear that they sent me. So five years of healing to narc and finally found a lot the love of my life it's so easy compared to the narcissist right it's gonna be easy guys hey what's up meek how are you girl miss you girl um it's gonna feel really boring so we have to remember this because with a healthy relationship there's no love bombing there's no we're the same person we're the so we're so close we're so tight we're soulmates there's none of that shit okay there's no whisk you away on a vacation somewhere. You know, there's no fancy dinners. There's no flowers. There, a lot of the time, these healthy relationships take time to build to this point where you do rituals and you get to this point where you're, where you're just chill. You look over and you see this person, this partner of yours, and you're like, hey, you're still there. Awesome. That's a healthy relationship. <laughs> We're getting married. Yeah. It's like a smolder, a soulmate word, red flag. Yes, exactly. Um, mine reassured me that I was scared to live again. You were so scared to live again. Dang. Yeah, I don't know what that would feel like. Well, you know, it feels healthy. When it feels healthy, it feels peaceful. When it feels peaceful, it's calm. And sometimes if we're not used to calm, it can feel boring. Today he apologized and said, I don't know what he's going through and how hard it is for him. Oh, cry me a river. Not for you because you gave up on men. Oh, I did not give up on men, Louise. Thank you though. Thanks for your um, thanks for your input. Actually, you don't know anything about me, so I don't know if you would know if I gave up on men. And um, if you were a phone hacker and you did hack my phone, you would see that I did not give up on men. You know what's health? It's healthy and peaceful when you can get a good night's rest. Exactly. You know what's the really good part about rest after a narcissist? Is we're no longer going to sleep and we're no longer going to bed as a means for an escape. We're going to bed and to sleep, right? We're going to bed and we're going to sleep for rest. We're doing it for rest. We're having a restful sleep. When we're with the narcissist, we go to bed because we have a panic attack. We go to bed because we're escaping our, our, you know, our, our shitty life. We go to bed because we're in distress. We go to bed to hope that it just goes away and hope to not wake up sometimes. That's why we go to bed with a narcissist. We Hopefully we fall asleep before they get home so that we don't have to deal with them, right? Now we get to go to sleep for rest. Now we get to go to sleep to actually feel um, free, right? Relaxed. I've had enough of this guy. It bothers me. Bye. Finally free. True, right, Nicole? True, 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 true. It's going to be bad because we aren't home and you don't want to worry what they're doing. Exactly. Gets offended when I say I want you off all my accounts. I love sleeping alone. Me too. You know what? I sleep in the middle of my bed now. Best thing ever not to be attacked in bed by him. Yeah. So, you know, I used to always say that the narcissist that I married wasn't abusive physically. I used to always say that right? Until I learned about physical abuse in the form of sleep deprivation, physical abuse in the form of intimidation, physical abuse in the form of reckless driving, and all of the other ways that a, that a person can physically abuse you because you are physically in danger or intimidated, or there's physical parts of your body that are affected, right? And most, most emotional abuse is physical abuse, if you really think about it. Because when you really think about it, what happens to our body when we're being abused this way? The amount of cortisol that spikes every time we're being abused, right? And not only this high level of abuse, but the ambient abuse that happens throughout the whole relationship, right? I'm looking forward to growing out of the jumpiness and, and skittishness. Yeah, the skittishness is like, it's this anxiety. It's this riddled with anxiety feeling that we get. So... When we think about that type of abuse, that is physical abuse, okay? 
But here's the really fucked up part about narcissists and what they do to us. The narcissist that I married, he used to kick, yes, he used to kick me, punch me, smack me in bed while they were sleeping. Oh, whoops, sorry, I didn't know you were there. Oh, so, oh. Wake up in the middle of the night. Oh. And it's almost like their subconscious, whether they were knowing that they were doing it or not, it's like their subconscious is telling them, like, I'm violent. I want to physically attack you. I want to, right? How many of us had a narcissist punch a hole in the wall right beside them? Right? Or come up close to them and with their wild eyes and scared the shit out of them, right? How many of those narcissists did that to you but didn't actually hit you? How many of us had narcissists who would kind of scare us in this way and almost like that intimidation that's also reckless driving, that's also like, ah, drive so fast, right? Screaming, spitting, right? And then there are narcissists who do hit us. There are narcissists who are very violent, but sometimes when they try to restrain themselves because they don't know, we know that their image, you know, yes, it, their image is very important to them. So they wouldn't want to be known as a wife beater or, a, you know, a, someone who has assaulted somebody else. They don't want to be known as that. But there's this deep, like, darkness inside, right? And a lot of narcissists, they thrive in that darkness and it comes out in them in night, in the night, Late at night, when they're in bed, they might just, oops, sorry, hit you, hit you, right? So there's that, there's that stuff, right? Mine said, I didn't, I didn't hit you after he was choking you. Oh, he didn't think he abused me. Yeah, they don't think so because of the entitlement. Thank you for the roses. Thank you, Nicole, sweetheart. He would read me the Bible every day. Yeah, there's religious abuse as well that happens in these relationships. Um strangulation I'm going to tell you something and I want you to really think about this I'm not doing it to scare you I'm doing this to air for caution I'm doing this to warn you any person who puts their hands around your neck in anger okay I'm not talking about any time they choke you in any way you are 70% more likely to be murdered by them. Okay. Any intimate relationship with someone, they put their hands on your throat in anger. Okay, that's the key point there because I know there's, there's other reasons for that too. But for the purpose of anger and rage... That's a 70% chance, okay? Your 70% increased chance of not being here anymore. So be really careful about that. This is not only a red flag. This is a, a blaring light of danger. And I know it's not so easy to just leave people like this. It's not so easy. Right, but you do have to think of those stats. There's a lot of stats that are important. The one that is being spread all across the community all the time in domestic violence is seven times, right? Right? Seven times is the amount of times we go back to our abuser. Seven times on average. Okay? But do we talk about the rates and the stats on strangulation? We need to. We need to. Very crazy, yes. Hearing that statistic has been a huge push for me the last few months. Yes. Re really, it's important to hear the statistics. It is important to hear the statistics. And the big ones, the big ones, the ones that are negative, not the bullshit statistics that say, oh, only 1% of people are actually narcissists. That shit doesn't matter because it's 1% too many, right? Because it's 1% of people who are actually hurting other people. I don't know how to leave. I need help. Jenna, I'm a, I'm a certified life coach. If you are looking for support and you are looking for help, I do a couple of things. So if anyone's just popping in here, my name is Ro. I am a narcissistic abuse survivor. I'm also a certified life coach and I can help you heal from narcissistic abuse. I offer coaching and I also offer group coaching. I also offer um, some different webinars. So if you go to the link in my bio and you see what I have coming up and anyone who's worked with me, you can put your hand up if you want to, only if, you're sh if you would like to. Anyone who has worked with me, 
pop your hand in the chat and just say, hey, I want you to know that there are survivors in this group here that are in this chat that I've helped and I can help you. I don't know what your situation is. Hi, yes. I don't know what exactly you're going through or how much help you need, but you've got this. You absolutely have got this. You are in a place right now where you are. No, you know where your trajectory is. You know where you're going. It's just taking the steps to get there. So what I do with you is we'll sit down, we'll chat, um, but if I can't afford you. So here's the thing about affording, okay? I know I've increased my rate, so like I know it's not super financially feasible for everyone at the right time. But the thing with being able to afford something is when we're ready, we can do it. And there's a lot of times where there's chaos that enters our life, where it stops us from being able to access monetization and access abundance from the universe or God, whatever we believe in, and access this, this area where we can get rid of lacking. And we stop lacking and we start accessing abundance. And then we can get to a place where we can say that I can afford this and that. Have you ever had a friend say, no, I can't afford to go out to dinner tonight, right? I can't afford to go on that trip. No, I can't, I can't afford to go to the concert with you guys. I'm going to stay in. But they can afford going to dinner with this person or they can afford a concert of a artist that they do like, right? It's not that we can't afford it. It's just that we can't, we can't, we don't choose to put our money there. We choose to put our money somewhere else, right? So I sometimes struggle with the words can't afford it because we can afford anything we want. We can afford anything we need in our life, right? And yes, a lot of people live in poverty. I understand that part, but we all still have access to electronics. We still have access to internet. We still have access to specific things and, and you know, if there are supports out there, we still have access to those supports. So there's always supports out there. If there if there's a real hard level of poverty happening in my community or anybody that is here listening, check out the hotline.org, the hotline.org. It's the domestic violence hotline. And it can help you with resources and different supports if you cannot um, gain access to invest in this type of healing. But anybody who does want to invest in this type of healing, hey, Globetrotter, what's up? I'm going to be on my other account later on, so I will see you there. Anyone who has, who needs um, access or has access to this type of healing, to this type of investment, what I do for you is a couple things. I'm going to sit with you and chat with you about why you're crying every night, right? About why you're feeling like you missed that narcissist, why you can't see no contact. We're going to start talking about all the areas of your life that brought you here, right? Had to access a local domestic violence shelter. Yeah, I feel that. So yeah, the hotline.org is something we can all access if anybody does want to look into that. Um, but we'll sit and talk about what's happening. And then I'm going to really listen to your story from a place of no judgment, from a place of love, and from a place of um, nothing, meaning that I don't carry my past traumas vicariously to you, right? I don't assess you from a place of what would I do. I actually listen to what you're sharing with me with a place of clarity and I'll give you the lens. I'll give you the clarity. So you'll be able to put the lens on and see it exactly how I see it. Okay. That's what I do. And the next thing is we take steps on how to move forward. Exact step-by-step -step plan and how to move forward and get the life you want. Oh my God, I pushed for that. Thank you for this, honestly. I got you, girl. The thing is I haven't got to the healing because I'm still with him yet. And I do have people that I meet with that are still with the narcissist and can't get rid of them. And some of them stay with them and that's okay too. I literally have no judgment. Sometimes it's family members. Sometimes it's your friends. Sometimes it's a boss. You know, I had a really good client for, you know, the whole summer that was dealing with her, the narcissistic boss that she, that she was working with. And it was really hard for her to live and work at this job that pays her bills and have a narcissist right there every day. Sometimes we can't leave. So yes, cognitive behavioral therapy can also help, right? EMDR can also help is the eye desensitization movement. Um, it's also, there's different modalities that you can use on top of coaching. So I always say like coaching and therapy kind of can go hand in hand in a lot of ways. I do ther I go to therapy often, like twice, twice a month. 
and I make sure that I deal with the things that I'm processing daily. Um, yeah, DBT works too. DBT is actually, um, yeah, EMDR. DBT is, is um, dialectal behavioral therapy, right? And it actually works really well with other cluster B disorders. So a lot of people that I work with still do other types of therapy um, clinicians with clinicians. And so that can help as well. Do you know the signs? Oh yeah, so Claudia, we were talking about the signs. So some of the red flags to look for. Um, a lot of the red flags that you wanna look for are people who move too fast. People who don't take the time to get to know you, right? Why did I attract the narcissist? Life begins when you start asking the right questions, okay? Why is a wrong question? Why gets you nowhere? Why gets you nowhere? So what you wanna do is say, what can I do to not attract another narcissist, right? How can I move forward from the narcissists that I did attract before? You're so beautiful, thank you. Right, what can I do? So what we can do to prevent ourselves from being attracted to narcissists, and guess what guys? I've been doing this for almost a year, longer than a year, really, because I only started coaching a year ago. But before that, I was healing out loud, I was doing my thing. So I've been doing this, you know, for about a year coaching, and I still fell prey to another narcissist. And I still didn't see the signs. So it's okay. We can't just say that we're going to be narc repellents and that they're not going to get access to us because really, especially on social media, they're going to find us and they're going to prey on us. Okay. So what we have to do is we have to get really clear with what our radars look like and make sure that they are strong. Can you trust a friend from you X? I don't know what that means. So, um, Love your lives. You're so welcome. People give people chances too. Yeah, of course. So it's okay. The second you feel a weird feeling, a red flag is something that you feel that's weird. So let's do a shift here. Instead of saying that this person's a red flag, that person's a red flag, that person's a red flag. We can all say that when he says I love you right away, when, he, when they say yeah, we're soulmates, when they say we're the same person, that could be red flags. Great. Okay. But what about the red flags you feel inside? What about, hey, they lied about this weird thing. I don't like, I don't like little white lie. I don't care if it's a little, little white lie. Little white lie, I can't say that. I don't care if it's a little white lie. That's, that's not cool, right? That's, that's a red flag. What about anxiety? When you're around this person, do you feel anxious? That's anxiety, that's, that's a red flag, right? Do you feel like you can't trust them? Do you feel suspicious? Did they rage out on you and you were like, whoa, 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 right? Did, were you talking one day and something happened and they sent you a million text messages? Like literally pages and pages and pages of text messages and it was overwhelming and you were overwhelmed? Red flag, okay? So when you start to feel this sense of like something ain't right, then you can turn your radar up and say that's a red flag and you don't have to put up with that shit, you can say, something's not right here, there's been a shift, I'm no longer romantically involved, interested in you anymore. The thing about narcissists, guys, is we develop this amazing, beautiful, cutthroat ability to cut anyone off who isn't who they say they are and isn't really for you. All right, all this stuff is comfort now, it's so bad. I feel that. He told me he was a doctor. Yeah, they'll say they have a psychologist degree when they don't, right? They'll say, they'll say all sorts of shit just to get you to, you know, they amplify who they really are because they're deeply flawed and extremely insecure. So they have to pretend to be something they're not. He pretended he was never married before, right? They pretend all of these things. You're so welcome. And they have to fake who they are because they're just masking the monster that they really are inside, right? He washes cars now, but like, <laughs> you left your husband last night. How are you feeling about that? The mimicking, yeah. So they mirror you, they mirror your qualities. They turn into a mirror image of you so that you can trust them. 
And they do this because they want to be like you. They almost want to be you. It's kind of creepy. So in the beginning of the relationship with this narcissist, they're going to love bomb you and they're going to mirror you and pretend that they're exactly like you. They're going to say, I love that too. That's my favorite song. Oh my God, I grew up on this. Wow, this happened to me too. Okay, and they're going to do that just to gain that trust and to gain that camaraderie and feel connected to you. And you are you're going to think that you're looking at yourself. You're looking at a mirror image of yourself and you're going to you might start falling for them. Okay, then the next thing that they're going to do is they're going to start sharing their traumas with you, their childhood traumas, the trauma that's in their life right now, what they're dealing with. They're going to start sharing and spilling all of this to you in order for you to start spilling all your shit to them. They're going to start spilling all of their traumas, especially their childhood traumas, because that way you feel like that you're trusted. They, they feed, they're feeding you these, and sometimes they're even lies, which is awful. Sometimes this abuse that they've had as a child or some of the things they say about themselves is just a bold faced lie just to get you to, to be vulnerable, right? They do that to draw out your vulnerability so they can weaponize them against later. Yes. Thank you, Natty. So that's what you want to really pay attention to. Are they sharing all these divulging, all these traumas to you? Because when they do, you start to share yours. Then what might happen is they'll start to create stories based off of your stories. That's the mirroring. You might share something that happened with, with an ex or with a family member and they'll go, yeah, you know what? That's, that reminds me of this is something that I did too. And my ex did this too. And it, and it almost the weirdly exact same story. I feel embarrassed. I trauma dumped and he never told me about himself. So I realized he had no reason. Probably there was nothing there. The narc lied about their trauma, made up a whole detailed story to just relate to me. Yes, yeah, same here. That just happened to me. Um, oh, Jen, I'm so sorry. To be a narcissist, live. He was never one. He was the one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then you quickly realize, right? So there's that. There's the love bombing. There's the mirroring. There's the sharing of the traumas. And then there's the exploitation. At some point, they're going to start using you like that shiny toy that we talk about, how a narcissist looks at you like you're a shiny toy, like you're just so fun to play with. I'm going to play with you. I'm going to show you off. I'm going to show you off to all my friends and family. Hey, look, it's Ro. It's my girlfriend. Check it out. She's Ro. She's Ro. Look at her. She's my shiny toy. I get to play with her. And they're going to play with you and play with you and use you and manipulate you so that they get what they get. That's the exploitation. They gain something from being with you. They gain something from having you, the arm piece, the, the candy on the shoulder, right? And when you start to see things, like you'll start to realize who they are, they'll start lying more and more and more. And when you feel this and you understand that this person isn't real, this person was a facade, they were a dream, okay? They weren't real. They just wanted attention. They just wanted to use you. When you realize that and you see that they're not really for you and they're not who they say they are, right? What happens when you realize that someone isn't really for you? and isn't who they say they are, what do we do? Cut. Cut throat ability to cut anyone off who isn't who they say they are and isn't really for you. Got it, guys? Do we got it? Cut that tie. Go no contact. No contact. You do not need to give them a reason. Bye. You do not need to explain it away. You do not need to have a conversation and answer all their questions. Why are you blocking me? Why are we not talking anymore? What did I do wrong? What? You don't need to explain yourself to that person. They're not who they say they are. That's enough. They're not really for you. That's enough. They used you. That's enough. They lied to you. That's enough. They're an imposter. That's enough. Okay, guys? That is enough. Cut them off. They're not who they say they are, and they're not 
really for you. That's the cut through ability that we gain from healing from this shit. Tanner's in the house. What's up? Any narc behavior and I cut it. Cut, 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 cut. Okay? So that's what we got to do. <laughs> I'm not defending any anyone of any color and any crimes. I'm not defending anything like that, user. So thank you for that one. That's funny. He used me and then discarded me. Okay, so we get to discard them. Right? It's sad that people are preying on us. It's sad. And unfortunately, it's going to happen on social media. Unfortunately, because of some of us with our followings and the people who follow us and the community that we're in, we're in a really vulnerable space. We're in a space where anyone can just infiltrate it and get in and listen to all the content and start picking up stuff from other people and then pretending as if they know what they're talking about and pretending as if they're the victim. They can easily be a victim. They can play that role so easily because they know exactly, they know who to study. They're studying you. They're studying you, they're watching you. What does a victim do? How does a survivor act? What do they say in their content? What kind of stories do they got? And then they'll start saying it. So be, be really careful when you're watching somebody, especially on TikTok and you're watching their content, if you don't feel a good vibe, if you feel really uncomfortable, right? If it's making you confused, and what they're saying isn't clear, they're just spitting out a bunch of words, then what you've got there is um, a liar. What you've got there is somebody who is, sorry, I need to block somebody here. No, 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 no. Move. Block. People are so fucked up. Um, arguing with anyone on their live that questions them. Yeah, exactly. Watch what happens when they get annoyed when they're sitting there on their live being like, oh yeah, no, I don't agree with that next, right? Blocks anyone that's on their live. That's fantastic, great. Do whatever you can, but if you feel confused, if you feel like you don't like this person's content, if you feel like they're making you feel unsafe, block them. You can block them. Protect your peace, protect your peace right? His true colors came out when I noticed that. Exactly. Yep. Yep. If you listen closely to a narcissist, they will tell the truth on themselves every time. We just got to listen. Sometimes we got to listen with a specific ear. We have to listen with that right, right ear where we're like, wait a minute, something ain't right. Something doesn't add up. Ashton. Oh, hi. What's going on? What about when you have to co-parent with them? Yeah, you can't really co-parent with a narcissist. I hate to break it to you, but we cannot co-parent with narcissists. What we can do is we can parallel parent. The narcissist does this thing one way and you do your thing the other way. And the two do not need to collapse into each other, right? The narcissist doesn't need to have access to the way you parent, right? And the narcissist, you, you don't have to access how the narcissist parents. So you have to get to a place where you're... Um, able to separate that and pick some of your battles. You're packing up for your drive to Vancouver this weekend. Holy, how, how long is that drive? Ontario to Vancouver? That's a really long drive. Words never, words never said better. Protect, protect your peace. Protect your peace. So I have some really exciting news, guys, before I go. I'm only on for six more minutes. 42 hours. Ashton, that is way too long. That's way too long for a drive. Get a, catch a flight. Catch a flight, Ashton. What the hell? Okay, I have some really exciting news that I wanted to share before I go. Okay, what's the news? What's the news? I have merch. So I just got it all ready to go. There's 13 pieces. Only one, one um, isn't available in Canada, so it can only be shipped to the United States. Um, it's just a, a mug, a black mug. So I have mugs, I have tumblers, I have shirts and hoodies and hats. I got merch, I got hats, I got hats. I got a love is a verb hat and a narc free hat, but the free just says free. So love is a verb um, is a pretty cool one. So if you go to the link in my bio and the very top that says merch, you can access the whole store. If you don't already follow me on 
Facebook and Instagram. I do have Facebook shop and an Instagram shop, so you can go check that out there as well. The tumblers are really cool and the coffee mugs are pretty awesome too. Um, the hoodies are fantastic. And uh, yeah, there's like, um, <laughs> what is wrong with people today? There's, do you date black guys? Do you date black guys? <laughs> Should I? Um, so yeah, so there's merch. If you wanna go take a look, it's in my bio. It's on the um, Facebook shop and Instagram shop. So if you're not already following me there, you can go follow me there. Um, I also have my, I know it's so exciting. I ordered a whole bunch. So I ordered a whole bunch of samples for myself and like to show obviously when I go live and if I do posts on Instagram, I can tag them. But the roller coaster of love uh, sweaters and shirts and hoodies are really nice because they're like these really cool designs with like the roller coaster of love. So there's roller coaster of love. You got the, you, there's a hat. Did you take a look at it, Tanner? So you can go take a look. The hats are pretty cool. The hats are snapback, snapback hats. They're black. Um, I hate black guys. I don't know what was up with that comment. It's super weird. Um, but yeah, so I'm super excited. It gets, um, yeah, I think it's coming next week. So I'll show you guys, but super, super, super soft soft sweaters, soft shirts, you can order them. They're all custom. So all you do is you just click, you pick a size if it's the shirt or the hoodie and you just pick whatever you want and it just gets printed from the, my supplier and then just shipped right out to you. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. And then also I have a journal that's coming out on Amazon. I'm getting it published through Amazon right away. Your kids, you kids in your snapback hats, ah, I heard, I, hey, I heard your song today. What song was that on Guardians of the Galaxy? Which song was it? Was it Rosanna, my name? Hi, Ro, what's up, Spiritual Samurai's in the house? How's it going? Where are you from? I'm in Canada, I'm in Canada. All of the merch though that I have is going to be shipped from the United States. So that is why the prices are in US dollars in the currency um, and also because of shipping because that's where it goes the shipping is from there so the shipping is included in the price roller coaster of oh roller coaster of love yeah ohio players is who who plays that yeah how are you i'm doing good so guys check out the merch um awesome awesome i think i might have saw you were you live earlier or wait is this a different account uh if you want to work with me one on one, I offer coaching. My group coaching that is sold out is on Sunday. So who is who here is going to be at my group coaching on Sunday? Um, I do a group coaching event every single month. And the one that's on sale right now, the tickets are on sale for October 23rd. So if anybody wants to sign up for that one, it's on the link in my bio for October 23rd. Megan's going to be there. Anyone else who's gonna be there, pop your hand if you're in this chat. I cannot wait for that one. It's gonna be a really good, uh, really good one. So anyone who can make it, anyone who hasn't, email me if you don't have your link yet for that one. Um, and if you wanna join the one on October 23rd, you can just go hit the link in my bio and, and apply for that or register for that one. I want to call you Roro if that's cool. If it's not, it's cool too. You can call me Roro. You can call me Roro. Roro was my backup account for quite a long time. For, for sure, call me Roro. Uh, but before we go, let's go ahead and just pop your freedom dates in the chat. We do this as often as we can and we snap to freedom. So anybody who has a freedom date in the snap in the chat, let's Snapchat. Let's snap to the freedom dates. Mine is November 15th, 2019. November 15th, 2019, snaps to freedom. Hey Lauren, what's up? May 13th, 2022, yeah, yeah, yeah. October 21st, 2021, freedom. Your freedom date is the day you decided that you were gonna take your power back and you were going to choose you over the narcissist. That could be the no contact date. That could be the day you divorced. That could be the day you emancipated from your parents. That could be the day you moved out. That could be the day you had clarity and you said, ooh, I'm dealing with a narcissist. That could be the day that you just broke up with them. That could be the day you blocked them. So July 19th, August 3rd, proud of you all. Proud of you all. 
And if you don't have a freedom date, guys, it could be today. Still there, unfortunately. Okay, Feruza. If you don't have a freedom date, I want you to remember this, okay? You will. What you're dealing with right now is temporary, okay? I promise you it's temporary. This space that you're in will end. Hold on, pain ends, okay? That is the hope that you can have. That's what hope stands for now, all right, for you? Hold on, pain ends. Have hope that this is all gonna end and that pain's gonna end and you're gonna be on this side of freedom where you're popping a date in this chat and we're snapping for you, okay? It's gonna happen for you, I promise. I promise, all right? Stay strong, don't give up. And remember, there's a whole bunch of people here that are with you. We're with you right here. You're not alone, all right? Together we heal, all of us together. So thank you so much. Did someone say they had a question before I go? And if you do have a question and I missed it, go ahead and just hit the link in my bio. You can book a session with me. You can send me an email. You can go to my Instagram, follow me there and send me a DM. Any way you want to reach me, you can. I'm available to you, okay? From one survivor to another, I'll always be your friend. I'm here for you in this community. All right, guys, stay strong. Love you deeply. Stay strong. Not feeling good. You gotta go. Okay, well, I'll talk to you later, Neil. I'm gonna go live on my other account. But thank you guys so much. And okay, I'll just leave it with one last thing. Your worst day on the side of freedom will still be far better than the best day you ever had with that narcissist. I promise you. Have a good night. Bye guys.